All right, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate the use of my new Python sock stress denial of service tool. As many of you are probably well aware, there was a C code proof of concept made available for sock stress um, actually several years ago. Uh, personally, I've never been able to get it to work. That's not to say that it doesn't work. That's just to say that I suck at C. And so instead, I decided to develop an understanding of how the attack works myself and rewrite the attack in Python. And that's what I've now made here available on GitHub in the Python sock stress repo. So what we're going to do is we're going to test this out real quick. So I've got a victim machine, metasploitable here. And then I've got my Kali Linux box. So on my Kali Linux box, I'm going to grab that repo real quick. So git clone and Python sock stress. And then we'll change directory into that and change the permissions to make it an executable. And then when we execute it, we will see that if we do it without any arguments, it'll tell us the usage of the tool, which in order to use it properly, we want to specify a target IP address. That's going to be the system that we're attacking, a port number, and then the number of threads. And that's basically going to be the number of concurrent tasks, number of concurrent connections that it's establishing. And so real quick, let's get a baseline on our victim. Uh, first, we're going to look at the number of connections established. So we'll do that with netstat. And as you can see, we only currently have two connections established. And we'll also look at the free available memory in megabytes. And as you can see, we have a decent amount of both memory and buffer space, considering that this virtual machine is actually only allocated 512 megabytes of RAM. And then what we're going to do is we're going to run the tool. So first we want to provide the IP address of our target, which is going to be 172.16.36.131. And then the target port. So we're going to use FTP on port 21. And then we are going to run 30 threads and then we launch it and the only output we see from the tool is that the onslaught has begun and then that we can stop the tool with control C at any time. However, we can see that the attack is working by now looking at our connections on our victim system which have drastically increased and as you can see they're all connections to the FTP service and then also if we start looking at the available free memory we'll immediately see a drop as you can see we started at over 200 at 232 and we've already dropped to 188 free megs of memory and what we're going to see happen over time is that this memory will continue to drop until it's pretty much in the single digits and then once that's almost fully depleted we'll see the buffers cache value free space drop to next to nothing and then we can expect that our SSH terminal session here will become almost completely unresponsive as well as pretty much any other services that this service would otherwise be providing to its clients and uh, also, what we'll start seeing is that once the memory is completely depleted, in order to keep itself alive, the server will actually start shutting down services that are running in the background, thus generating service denial of service conditions. So not only do we have memory depletion that results in services becoming unresponsive, but we also have services that are going to be shut down in the background. So now that a little more time has passed, we'll look at it again. And as you can see, we've dropped from 188 now to 77 megs of free space. And we'll give this a little more time.
And we're now down to 44. Now the amount of time that it will take to crash any given server is going to depend on the amount of memory available to that particular server. In this case we have a virtual machine that has about 512 megabytes of RAM assigned to it. In this case usually two to three minutes to crash the server and get it to the point to where it's pretty much completely unresponsive. Um, as you can see we're now down to single digits on the available free memory and now we're going to start seeing this buffer cache deplete, depleting which actually we've already seen a significant drop in that as we can see it was up to 327 now down to 122 100 and I'm going to start increasing the interval in which we're querying this to see it go down to zero and more or less this is a countdown to when the server is going to become unresponsive and start shutting down services so as you can see we're now down to 70 59, 56, okay, 33, 29, and we're getting very close to single digits now so we can expect it to become unresponsive very shortly here and here we go 